Yo guys, what's up? This is Armin Van Buren and you're watching ThatDrop.com. Yo, 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 you tuned in live for ThatDrop.com. Pantarai is a is an is a saying. Pantarai kar unen manai is an old Greek saying from a ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus. You can Google him or on Wikipedia. There's the whole article. It's a saying that says everything flows. And what he means is that basically, if you stand in a river, you stand in this exact same river on the same spot on the next day. The water running in the river is completely different. Everything flows. It is nothing that you and I can do to prevent that. Liquid, we can't, it sort of drips through your fingers. We can't control. And it's a metaphor for me for what's happening in music right now. You know, everything is flowing, everything is moving along. We want to put labels on stuff like this is trance, this is EDM, this is deep house, whatever. But the fact is, is that music is, you can't really capture it in genres. It's constantly moving and merging and, and some people find that hard to deal with. They want to hold on to the past and there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not criticizing. I'm just saying that it's a fact of the matter that, you know, you can't prevent stuff from changing. Changing will always happen. I think people really got the meaning of Pantare, and uh, I was really surprised actually that nobody had a song called that. I think I actually found the techno guy that had a song and that had the same title, but other than that, it wasn't really uh, used that much. I think people can really relate to that. And what I like about it is the fact that it was uh, something said by a Greek philosopher more than 2,000 years ago. So they already knew that 2,000 years ago. I just made it, you know, just transformed it into this time. I think a lot of people agree, you know, if you're in Miami right now, the scene and the sound is completely different than it was in 2001. It's still Miami Music Week, right? It's like the water. We're still in Miami, same piece, same spot in the river. It's just 14 years later and the water running next to your legs made the music, the people was different. A lot of the things that I thought of uh, during, during my career were actually jokes, you know. Or there were references to music that I really liked. I mean, Gaia obviously being a reference to Enigma, the first Enigma album, and, and the roots of trance music. Everything that I did, I do comes from usually a failed plan or something. I have a tour manager that I tour with a lot, we speak a lot. And during the, the touring, we come up with a lot of crazy concepts for stage designs or brands of labels. Actually, I just started a new label called Who's Afraid of 138? And that was actually something that I said on the radio show. Because uh, some people were said that they didn't like the harder trance or something. So I said, so, that's sort of an irony. So who's afraid of 138? Who's afraid of the harder BPMs? You know, they go up. That sort of went viral on the internet. So it was kind of like, I just said that. And so I went with the flow and I decided to create to put that into a label. I'll just keep doing stuff that excites me. Because you know what? The stuff that I learned is that if it doesn't excite me, why the hell would it excite you? I wouldn't say that something is a failure necessarily. For example, some producers say I produced this track in four hours. And I always tell these people, no, you haven't. Because in those four hours, you you use the time, you built your studio, that cost you time. You got to learn your DAW, you learned the working of your plugins. So you actually learned all your experience from the past and used them to create this track. That might be your biggest track, but you're using sounds and you're using other tracks as well. So I wouldn't very I wouldn't really speak of good and bad, you know, a failure, something is wrong. There's, there's only a few things in my career that I'm actually said, yeah, that was a failure, I shouldn't have done that. But all the other stuff, you know, some of my tracks I'm more proud of than others. Mainly every track has always led to another, you know? Feel something. I gotta feel something with the stuff that I'm putting out. I, I, I can't really reproduce myself. I mean, some of my fans, they really want me to cre recreate an old track like Sail or Serenity or Communication. And you know what? I, I cherish these tracks. I'm proud of them. And I still play them. And I love them. But I can't take the same settings and create a track that sounds exactly the same. I need to be moving on just because I'm an artist and I can't do the same thing twice. I'm more productive now than I used to be. Very strange. I have two children. I have a very busy place at home, like you said. But for some reason, I've never released as much tracks as I did last year and this year. I'm going to release even more tracks than last year. And they're all my own productions or co-productions. I'm actually producing these tracks. So I don't know where I find the time. I guess 
These kids inspire me as well to be more creative and productive. I don't have time to fool around in the studio anymore. I feel I'm using my time more efficient now. And uh, what I like most about having children is that they are the most important thing in my life. And I'm not just saying that because that's what you're supposed to say as a parent, but I'm saying that because I love the fact that when I come home, I'm not the center of things anymore. I don't like to be the center of things. You know, when I come when I come to a, a birthday or something, or I meet a family member, they always start talking about, so hey, how was my Andy? How was Ultra? Or how's your career? Blah, blah, blah. How's your new single? And I was like, you know what? I'm not interested in me. I'm gonna, I don't want to be talking about you. How are you doing? You know? So and now when, when I have children, I come home and I'm just a part of the family. I have to take out the trash, I have to uh, go shopping for grocery, which makes it, puts everything back into perspective. Because if you start to believe in this life, if you start to believe in this success, you know, I see some artists around me that actually are here like, okay, they're in their own world almost. And that's not real life. Real life is growing up with two young children and seeing them become themselves. That's real life. Of course, this life sitting here talking to you and my and the sun out is great. That's fantastic, but that's just living the dream, you know. That's not reality. <laughs>
contact I really have with the place. The other day I was in Australia running uh, all the way from the Harbour Bridge next to the Opera House and the Royal Botanic Gardens. That's eight, eight kilometers, five miles, five mile run. Great run. I like how cats are very private, handle themselves really well. I like the fact that they can really be, you know, cuddling with you. I mean, we have a cat at home that's such a sweetheart. He comes to me in the studio all the time and cuddles, and it's really great. A big thank you to everybody watching. Uh, big thank you for all the years of continued support, especially for my radio show, State of Trans. Check out my new compilation, State of Trans 2015, and it's just been released. Very excited about it. Five of my new tracks on there. Pretty soon you'll be hearing a lot from my new music that's coming out. Uh, my first new single coming out, premiering it this weekend at Ultra. So I'm really excited and nervous about it. <laughs> and I uh, hope to see you somewhere around the world really soon. Yo, guys, what's up? This is Amit Van Buren, and you're watching ThatDrop.com. Tuned in live for that drop.com.